Till now, we've been using str underscore view to just learn about regular expressions and what patterns they match and what patterns they don't match. Now let's try to start putting this uh, concept of regular expressions to some actual processing. And we start doing that obviously by using functions other than strView because strView is just a testing function for us. So let's look at the use of the function str underscore detect. Okay, so now detect is simply going to tell you for every word or every uh, string that we pass with a particular uh, regular expression whether the string matched or not. So for example, here we've got the three words apple, banana, pear and if we use the regular expression e which is to say str underscore detect x comma e it's going to tell us which of these words matches this regular expression. Okay, Of course this is a very simple kind of regular expression which simply says contains e somewhere in it. So obviously only the first and the third word would match in this particular case, apple and pear would match. Banana does not contain an E. And therefore, the result is going to be true, false, true. Okay, so that's what you get. So it tells you that you gave me uh, three words. The first and the third ones matched. The second one did not match. Okay, so now you know that uh, given a bunch of uh, words or given a bunch of strings, you can find out which of them match a given regular expression or not or don't match. And this of course can be used to simply select all those things which match a particular regular expression. Okay. So for example, suppose you want to find how many common words starts with start with the letter T. By common words we mean words in our words data frame from the string R package. Right. So we could obviously use str underscore detect and that will give us an array of true or false. And you already know from prior knowledge of R that if you sum up this array, then uh, it will basically treat true as 1 and false as 0. So that will give us how many words matched. right? So if you did uh, sum str detect words and start with t, so uh, caret t, right? because the, we use the anchor to say it starts with t. Now if you miss the, car uh, the anchor, the caret, then it will mean they contain t anywhere in there. Okay, so if you did this, then you get your results. So let's jump into R and actually take a look at it. Okay, so this is the previous one. And how many common words start with a T? So you do that and you see that it is 65 words. Of course, right now uh, the viewer is not being used because we are only doing processing now. We are not using STR view. The viewer comes into play only when we are using STR view. Now we are saying string detect. So the, uh, the words uh, data frame, for example, suppose I did uh, length words that tells us how many words there are totally. So there are 980 words. Out of that, 65 of them start with a T, which is what we got as a result of this one. Uh, alternately, we can look at the next one, which says what proportion of common words end with a vowel. Right. So this time we are saying proportion, not the actual count. So in order to get the proportion, you can do the count and divide it by the total number of words or alternately, you can just take the mean. The effect comes out to the same, right? So if you have ones and zeros and you take the mean, then the result is going to be the proportion. So that's what we do here is TR detect and we are saying end with the vowel. So we are saying uh, one of AEIOU with square bracket and dollar. So this is going to tell us what proportion end with the vowel. So if you run that, you will see this result 0.277. Okay, so that's what you get. So what is happening is you get the, uh, with the str detect, you get a, a Boolean array of trues and falses. And we know that R treats true as 1 and false as 0 if you try to perform arithmetic operations. On it. So therefore, when we do a mean, you get the proportion of words that end with a vowel. Right? So here, what we have now moved is, the, what we have now done is we have made a transition from simply experimenting with regular expressions to see which uh, which strings match a particular uh, regular expression. And we did that using the str underscore view function. We've transitioned from there to using regular expressions to perform some actual string calculations. Okay, 
So that's what you get with uh, str detect. So that's a real use of regular experience as opposed to str underscore view. Let's look at some more examples of using str detect. Right now, suppose we want to find the words that don't contain any vowels. That is, words that are made up entirely of consonants. Now, we are going to show two ways of doing this. In the first way, what we are going to say is, we are going to first find the words that contain vowels, at least one vowel, and then negate that. Right? So, that is this. So, I am saying no vowels 1 is str detect words, comma, e, i, o, u. That is, somewhere in the word, one of these letters appears. Right? So, we get that. So, that will be a vector, as we already know, consisting of trues and falses. Right? So, any word that contains at least one vowel, will, the position will contain true. Otherwise, it will contain false. Right? So, now it is a simple matter for us to reverse that by saying not of this. So, whatever is true will become false, whatever is false it will become true. And then we can say words of no vowel, no vowels underscore one. Okay? So, that will give us only those words which contain only non-vowels. Right? That is, they don't contain any vowels because we took the words that contain at least one vowel and then we inverted that Boolean vector by saying not. So now when you subset words with that, you'll find uh, we've got the words, only words that are made up of, uh, words that are made up of only consonants. Okay? So let's look at that example here. Uh, so no vowels is not str detect words a e i o u. So we got that. Of course, you don't see the results, but if you look at no vowels one, uh, if I just say no vowels one, I should see that it's of course a, a boolean vector with trues and falses. It's a big vector, so we won't uh, be able to look at it, right? But it's got some trues in them, and those trues represent the positions of words that are made up entirely of vowels, uh, of uh, non-vowels, of consonants. Of course, there are very few such words. Uh, in fact, I am not even sure that our data set contains any of them, but let's see here. There could be, for example, the word drive, fly. These are words that contain no vowels. So, let's run this thing and see, well, the results are those. By, drive, fly, uh, MRS is a word, misses, try, why, and so on. Okay, so that's one approach to do this problem. Uh, another problem is to write a regular expression that completely matches only uh, non-vowels. So we're going to do this. So here is a regular expression that says, it starts with, and remember the square bracket, caret a e i o u basically says, any it'll match any character that is not one of these characters, right? So this uh, matches a consonant, right? Square, uh, within square brackets, this. So this matches a consonant. Now what we are saying is, the word starts, right? So we've got the caret here indicating that it's the beginning of the of the string. So right at the beginning, you have a consonant, and then it says plus, which means one or more consonants, right? That this plus means that you have one or more of the pattern that precedes it, right? So it'll match a consonant. Keep on matching a consonant. And the mismatch will occur when you see a vowel, something other than a consonant. Okay? But what we are saying here is, it consists of one or more consonants, and then you hit the end of the word, which means there is nothing else. There is nothing else other than a consonant. There is no vowel, right? because it starts with a consonant, has one or more consonants, and ends. Right? So that is a regular expression that will match only a string of consonants. Okay, and we are saying it starts and ends, so it's not that this occurs somewhere in the string, but this is the entire string. It starts, has a bunch of consonants, and it ends, so it has no vowel. So that way, no vowels 2 will essentially be the same as no vowels 1. It's just another way of finding it out, and then you say words of no vowels 2, you'll get the same result. Okay, so let's run that and just verify that you actually get the same result. So we got exactly the same results as before. Okay, so that's about uh, this. Now, of course, this is such a common pattern that there is a function called str underscore subset, right? So the point is here. What we did was we got a boolean array telling us 
which are the words that uh, position uh, telling us uh, giving us the position of the words that we are interested in and then we are using that as an index into our main collection right now this operation is so common that there is a function called str underscore subset which will take care of finding the uh, the boolean array of consisting of all the matches and then using it as an index right so this is really a shortcut for doing finding first the array and then doing the index str underscore subset words and then we are using this same uh, pattern here the regular expression and that will do the job so once again let's just run it and verify that uh, it indeed does the job which is obviously more convenient so it gives us the same results and it's a lot more convenient okay so far we've been looking at using regular expressions on uh, vectors of strings right so we've had a bunch of sentences uh, from the string r package and we did some regular expression matching with those sentences we also did some regular expression matching with the words uh, vector that was contained in the uh, you know in uh, in the string r package we also used the fruits and so on so now let's look at uh, how to create tables consisting of textual columns and how to use regular expressions to do matching on them okay so we're going to see how uh, because after all most of the time our data is going to be stored in the form of tables right so for example when you downloaded the tweets from twitter what you got back was a table consisting of the text now we need to be able to analyze that right so now we want to scale up what we are doing with regular expressions to uh, how to manage it in a real scenario with tables okay so we're just going to show you first an example of how to create a table with something with words from let's say the words uh, vector of uh, string r okay so we're going to again use the package tidyverse so we're saying library tidyverse because we're going to use tables we're going to use you know start using uh, pipes and all of these things dplyr right so here i'm just going to take the words uh, vector put it into a data frame or a table so i'm saying df is table and the first column of the table is simply going to be all the words we have in our words uh, vector of of uh, string r and then just to add context we want to put attach a serial number along with each word right so rather than just having one column with the word in it we want to have another column that gives an index a number right so it's very easy to do that and we are just saying i which is the name of the second column is seek along word uh, actually it should be seek along word yeah word is the column here right so when you use the function seek along basically what it will do is uh, it will it will put a number right so the seek along will generate the vector 1 2 3 4 5 up to the maximum size of this particular column so seek along would basically generate 1 2 3 4 5 6 up to the total thing. so i will be the second column so when you do this the result looks now like this because the word the words uh, vector just contained the words a able about absolute etc etc it had this but now what we did is we took all of that put it into one column called word and then we put uh, the index which which is here i is seek along word and we put that into another column one two three four five six uh, we, uh, we printed 10 but of course it goes on and i think it has 970 more so total of 980 uh, rows in this state of in this table okay so we can create tables like this uh, and then we can start processing them. So that's the whole idea here of uh, uh, doing this uh, regular expression matching in the context of tables. Now that we have this table, we can then do regular expression matching on this uh, table.